Hello and welcome to the Idio Freak channel. I'm Genshi and today I'm reviewing the game Enter the Gungeon. I've been following this game for a while now and it's finally come to the Xbox so I can finally get my hands on it and uh, do a review. So let's jump right in. Enter the Gungeon is a top-down roguelike shooter in the same vein as games like Rogue Legacy and The Binding of Isaac. For those not in the know, the roguelike genre is usually a dungeon crawling game, normally with procedurally created levels and high difficulty and permadeath. These games are usually fun and addicting, but they're also extremely frustrating, and Enter the Gungeon is no different. Enter the Gungeon stars four characters who enter the Gungeon to find a gun that can kill the past. If that premise sounds crazy to you, it's because it is. Enter the Gungeon doesn't take itself seriously, and it is aware of how bizarre it is. This love of the fun and its love of the strange permeates every part of the game. This game is about shooting, and that's what you'll do. The Gungeon is aptly named. Once you choose one of the four characters, you're thrown into a dungeon where you'll fight all manner of creatures, including sentient bullets who shoot guns with hopefully non-sentient bullets. It's all daft, but it's extremely fun. You'll meet strange characters along the way. Even if they're not given much to say, their art design and the little bit of dialogue given to them breathes life into the characters. This is thanks to the game's simplistic but dense and direct art style. As you move around the gungeon, book pages burst into the air, tables are flipped spilling their contents to the floor, and barrels splinter and explode from gunfire. Simply stated, its 2D style looks great. Now, while the art direction and tone are pretty light, unless the game specifically wishes to be dark, which it also does well, the gameplay is anything but light. This game can be tough as nails and you will die, probably a lot. The action in this game is fast paced and it doesn't let up. Some of the gunfights have more in common with the genre of bullet hell games than their roguelike counterparts. The gungeon tasks you with maneuvering, dodging, and striking back. Due to the procedural nature of the game, some of your runs through the gungeon will be smooth, seeing you find plenty of life, ammo, and shields, while other runs will be far more desperate. The gungeon does operate off of rules, but item placement and enemy placements can sometimes be very random. The game can be frustrating when it feels like the odds are unevenly stacked against you. The game does attempt to ease you into this difficulty, though. After the tutorial, the flow of the game is like this. Pick a character, enter the gungeon, explore the floor, fight enemies, find guns, defeat a boss. Then you're taken down to a lower level of the gungeon to do the same thing over again with more difficult enemies until you inevitably die and uh, start the process anew. That may have sounded like an oversimplification, but it really isn't. For better or for worse, that is the life of a roguelike procedurally created video game. There isn't much more to it, but that's why it's so fun and addicting. With every frustrating death, you want to dive back in because your next run will be better. You'll just know it. And whether it is or not, you'll still have a ton of fun. Well, let's talk about the guns a little bit. I mean, that's the reason you came, right? They're hilarious, and many seem to be nods to other gaming and movie franchises. Most of the guns are bonkers, but a joy to play with. You may be splashing a wizard with a high-powered water gun one moment, only to electrify an adorable bullet man with an oversized Duracell battery the next. Things get even crazier when external buffs and items are introduced. I remember beating a boss with a glacier grenade thrower that also spread napalm where it landed. My enemies would both freeze and be set alight. The game is fun, madness, and even better with a friend with the couch co-op. Online co-op would have been amazing too, and it kind of seems like a missed opportunity in this modern era. So in the end, the game has an amazing art style, fun and simple gameplay, and addictive levels that are never the same. That makes this game worth the $15. It's a steal, really. The way I rate my game is a little bit different. The scale goes lame, rough, solid, excellent, or amazing, with amazing being my highest praise. I give this game a high, solid, a low, excellent. While the game is great, it's also very frustrating and uneven at times. Additionally, the formula gets played out quickly. Anyway, that's just my opinion. We want you to think on your own frequency, so let us know what you think in the comments below. Again, this is Genshi with Idio Freak, and don't be afraid to hit that subscribe and like button. Catch you later. Freak Nation out.